Hi everyone. What would you do if your doctor handed you this stuff that came out of your body after your colonoscopy? Well, it's not blood, it's not poop, it's some other bodily fluids and I gave this to my patient after a colonoscopy a couple of months ago. I want to know if you would have done the same. I'm really curious because this is a special story. Please tell me what you would have done. I'm Dr. Anthony Cave. I'm an anesthesiologist and integrative medicine specialist. And not too long ago I had a patient, a young woman, who had a colonoscopy. She was terrified of anesthesia and I don't blame her. I mean, the white juice can kind of be scary, especially if you've never had it before. This individual had smoked a lot of cannabis and they told me about it. So it's fine if you tell your anesthesiologist we can manage your brain being different because of the chronic cannabis use, in part by having to give a lot more anesthesia and being prepared for more what we call secretions, meaning fluid that comes out of your mouth, out of your throat, etc., when you're under anesthesia, even if the surgery doesn't involve your throat. So this patient had an uneventful course until all of a sudden it became eventful. Out of nowhere, a bunch of goop started coming out of the patient's mouth and they stopped breathing. So this is what's called laryngospasm from secretions irritating the vocal cords. Now they had warned me about this, so I had a lot of propofol, which is the treatment for laryngospasm, to quickly inject into the patient. But not before a good couple hundred milliliters, a couple ounces of kind of gross, grody stuff came out of their mouth. So we had to, this is called a Yankauer, we had to suction all of that out of their mouth with the Yankauer, push the propofol, and actually push it back to breathe for them. Not quite CPR, but pretty similar that you have to breathe for the patient who is not breathing themselves. It happens when anesthesia requirements are so high and the onboard anesthesia isn't sufficient and that can cause the vocal cords to go into spasm. So it's like trying to breathe but your throat is closed off because your vocal cords have closed off. Laryngospasm. Spasm of the larynx, specifically the vocal cords. Now fortunately the patient ended up doing just fine with the appropriate treatment at the right time. But what did I do after they woke up. And I want you to tell me what you would have done. I could have done nothing. I could have just let them wake up in the recovery unit and see you later. Or I could have complained and said, you know what, you smoke too much weed, young lady. You need to stop smoking and just given a lecture like that and walked away and gone home. Or I could have done something else. Now I will say, everyone looked at me like I was kind of nuts when I did this. But I want to know what you think because I think the patient and their patient's partner had a rather unique experience. I took this suction with their material off the wall and I gave it to the patient. Because you see, when we're waking up after anesthesia is wearing off, we're kind of like a child. We are thinking in ways we don't ordinarily think. We are saying things we wouldn't ordinarily say. We might think and act in ways that a child would and children are impressionable. Children might view things differently than adults that helps them learn things differently than rigid, stubborn adults. I handed this to the patient and I said, sir, <laughs> pardon, ma'am, ma'am, this came out of you. And then as we wheeled the patient into the recovery area, she just stared at her bag of secretions. She didn't know what it was yet. If I told her much more, she would have forgotten. So I had to keep it kind of trite or succinct, if you will. And after we dropped off the patient, I waited for her to kind of sober up a little bit. I said, ma'am, all of these secretions came out of your mouth. We had to breathe for you. And I believe this is because of smoking, marijuana, and maybe other substances as well. You might want to consider lowering the amount of marijuana that you smoke and any cigarettes and, cigarettes <clears throat> and any vaping that you do because this could be life-threatening. It wasn't today, but in the future. And the other effects in the body. Well, the patient looked and looked and looked. Then they looked at me. They said, 
doctor, these are my bad habits. <laughs> now, <laughs> I don't think, they were not upset, to be clear, but it, they had had an insight that I don't think anyone had ever given them before. And the other part of the story is their partner that was there. Their partner turned around and said, uh, I'm, I'm going to use a different name here, obviously, because I don't want to say the real name. Jill. Jill, why do you think this happened? Now, I don't know what else was going on, obviously. I'm sure there's a lot more in that interaction that the partners had had over smoking marijuana or whatever else. But there wasn't an I told you so, because it's like if someone's under anesthesia and they're a child, you're not going to I told you so to a child. You're going to be a little bit more compassionate. And the partner had that for the patient. Heck, I tried to have that for the patient. And the patient responded in a way that I think was different, quite frankly, than anyone else would have received it had they not been under anesthesia and not been given the direct result of what had going on instead of a lecture or simply being ignored, which I know happens because you have told me it happens. But you could have scolded, you could have talked down, you could have done the paternalistic top-down power play dynamic that some egotistical or arrogant individuals might play. But what I want to share with you is that I believe that when life presents opportunities for us to learn, if we can't see them, what greater gift than to point them out in others? If you think that helped someone or that you can help someone, let me know below. Share with others what you've learned. And if you do use any substances before surgery or anesthesia, just tell your anesthesiologist so we can prevent this from going into your lungs where it might hurt you and instead sucking it out and giving you the right medications to manage everything. I hope you all know that you have more power over your health than you've ever been told. And you have an opportunity to help inspire others as well. Until next time.